So in terms of parameter estimation, uh, we'll consider two cases, uh, random parameters and non-random. Um, but of course, unknown, because if it is known, then what is there? So here it is unknown. So random is, uh, for example, if a, so a submarine under water, right? So the first job is to detect. Right? Then it is estimation. So whatever, now let's say one unknown is its speed, right? Or if you are trying to, uh, let's say there is propeller going on here, right? Propeller motion, and it's a fee you can see because of the uh, uh, the the parameters from here could be random. Or in commu another simplest thing is the communication signal, a binary communication, but the, the sequence is random, right? That's more. so. Anyway, there are two. Uh, Non-random is it's a, there is an unknown. It's, it's nothing random about it. It's simply unknown. That's all right. So the constant is so we'll go to parameter estimation. Later we can have waveform estimation, which we will do towards the end of this course. So instead of a parameter, we may have a waveform itself is in both the cases. So unknowns could be a con. Uh, a, a time dependent function or no time dependent, but both could be random. So this will be a stochastic process, or it could be just a random variable here. And here it is unknown. Here it's an unknown waveform, that's all. So somebody is transmitting a waveform. There's nothing random about it. We just don't know, know what the waveform is. So it's coming with signal. So estimating it, uh, so this is a classic problem, right? So there is noise, then an unknown signal. But in the case of submarine, the signal that is coming from the submarine could be is usually random because it's due to that uh, uh, propeller noise generation, this and that, whatever tiny noise. So that waveform itself is a, it's not an intelligent signal. It's, a, it's a, that, that that will uh, correspond to here. Right? But this will come. Uh, we need uh, to do a little bit of stochastic processes. So let me. Uh, here, uh, let me deal with this problem today. Uh, so again, uh, either way you you have uh, you collect data. <coughs> of course, uh, the design of experiment is such that that you collect relevant data. So how so that part is done. So you collect data. So the estimator is going to be a function of the data, right? This is the estimator. So estimator will be always a function of data. And because the data is inherently stochastic, whether it is here or here, the estimator is going to be a random variable. And in this case, uh, and uh, either way, what we want is this estimator, we should want it to be close to the uh, uh, actual value. So the difference, you can take it as error. Or you can again bring in a cost. I hope this is easy to understand. This is the uh, penalty or cost in estimating A as A hat. A is estimated as A hat. So there's a cost which will depend on, it will be a Cost is a function of two variables, the unknown and your estimator. Now, if you, uh, so one common cost is usually you take the error, right? Sorry. So uh, uh, one example is where you take the error. I'll come to that in a second. And then you minimize the average cost by choosing, so the average cost is going to be expected value of uh, C, so that is C A A hat multiplied by the density function of A and A hat. But A hat is a function of R, 
So this integral is on uh, all of them, right? Or n, va n variables on R, and then uh, a. a is a random variable. So this is a n fold integral. And we can also write this as uh, so I can use the conditional density function and uh, write this as uh, in this fashion. A hat is a function of R, so I don't really need R here. This, this is good. Because the joint density, because remember, this is a function of R. So instead of writing like this, it's a joint density function of A and R. Or A is a function of R, right? So the only randomness here is from R. The randomness is here from A, so that's the joint density function. And uh, which I can also write it uh, like this. And if you want, you can write this as So you can see the action is all here. So if you if you want you get the whatever minimization need to be done, it need to be done at this stage because it's on this cost, right? So we can concentrate on this function if you um, want to do the minimization on uh, how to select the A hat. So the whole idea is minimize this uh, conditional variance. But this conditional variance will depend on the cost function. So traditionally, there are uh, you know, uh, so if you define error to be a minus a hat, one common cost is the mean squared error, right? So we'll use uh, this is one cost function. So this is known as uh, this approach is known as, and then we have to minimize it. So this is, uh, which stands for minimum mean squared error cry error. Minimize the mean squared error. And at this, uh, another cost function is just the absolute value of the error, which will be a minus a hat. So we'll see what that leads to. And the third one is an all on uh, a cost function like this. So cost is in terms of the error, but three different cost functions. So I hope you can see this. So what it says here, if the error is small, there is no cost. And if the error is beyond a delta, uh, then the penalty is high. So this is like uh, all or nothing cost. Uh, so let's quickly see what the, uh, what the estimators turn out to be in these three cases. So we can deal with uh, here, right? That's the whole point, right? So if I do, do the sigma a squared, which is a function of R, so let's see what the MMSE estimator is. So sigma. A is gone, so I'm simply going to call it sigma squared out, right? It's going to be integral. I'm going to do this one. So this is a quadratic error, A minus A hat. 
it multiplied by f a given r b a. But look here, r is given. So this is no longer a random uh, squared, right? Uh, this is just, it's just an unknown because r is given at this point. You want to say something? Don't we want to find a hat? Like... Yeah, a hat is unknown, right? A hat is going to be a function of r, right? Yeah, so, so the task is minimized over a hat, mm -hmm. like arg min over a hat uh, to find uh, something, uh, to minimize that, that whole uh, cost. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So essentially, we are looking for that a hat. D A equal to zero. So when you remember, this is sort of a this is a constant because R is given. So this leads to A hat multiplied by A given R uh, D A equal to integral of A F A given R. So what is the area? This is the area under a density function. So this is one. So we get the unknown to be simply the conditional mean of the uh, a given r, the classic result, right? So you had you get a hat mmsc equal to expected value of a given r. So the only catch is you need to know that density function. What is your question? What is your confusion? Uh, why did we minimize on sigma instead of the entire cost? Well, so you can see the action is uh, actually a hat is only coming here, right? This is not going to do anything to you. And uh, so it's just a deal. We have too many, uh, too many unknowns here. A is unknown. Uh, all the so we are degree of difficulty is brought one in at it, or you only deal with the essentials. Essential is right here. So this is the classic result. Minimization of the mean squared error leads to uh, uh, leads to the uh, conditional mean of uh, the unknown given the data. So I'm going to just write the result here and then move on to the rest. So A hat MMSC is. A, I mean, conditional mean of A given R. R is the whole data. And if you want to find out the cost associated with that, so you take this uh, estimator and put it into the previous expression. So if you recall, the cost turned out to be expected value of the cost, cost was, cost was, we are dealing with quadratic, so this is, uh, double integral a minus expected value of a given or this is our best estimator squared multiplied by the conditional density function of a given r so this is the conditional variance of a or multiplied by f r so the cost will be if you want an expression so that's just the expected value of that will be the minimum mean squared error in the sigma squared case. Oh, but this is the, look at here, this is the conditional mean is the best estimator, so you plug it in back. Then this is the mean minus variance density function, that's the expect, that's the variance, but condition no law, multiplied by the density function, that will be the expected value of this. Right? So let's look at the second one. Uh, maybe let me see how far I can go here. So here the cost will be since we are dealing with the three problems, this is the first one. 
So remember what this is. This is the minimization of the mean squared error. Leads to this as the best estimator. It's a classic result. Only problem here is you just need to know the density function. So sometimes this density function is not known. And uh, if this is not known, you can't do anything. Uh, so here, of course, it is uh, integral of a minus a hat multiplied by f a given r. So again, remember, I'm just taking this inner integral here. So instead of the quadratic, I'm going to put uh, this error function. Look here. This is absolute value of the error. Error is, error is unknown minus the estimator. So this now I can write this as minus infinity to a hat r a minus, uh, remember the variable is a, so a minus a hat. This need to be positive. So in this region this is positive, so I don't need the positive sign f a given r. Uh, plus a hat uh, r to plus infinity. Uh, this is absolute value. So this will be a hat minus a f a given r. Now we want to minimize this. So minimization means uh, the sigma squared, you take the derivative of this quality with respect to the unknown. The unknown is again a hat. So we can use the same uh, principle we did. So remember here, the unknown is in the upper uh, level of the integral. So this is the derivative of this, which is 1. Then you substitute the derivative into, <coughs> into wherever a is appearing. Look here. Yeah. Is, is that function differentiated? All right, so that's why I am uh, showing you a, uh, rather than a hit here, let's just uh, so this is for all points other than a hat is equal to 0, is that, I mean a hat is equal to 0. Not a hat, look at here. This one, what does it mean? The, whatever is this error, the whatever is this quantity should be positive, right? So one way to rewrite this is, remember a is the variable, a hat is what it is. Yes? So a can, a will go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So at, at the initially, <coughs> Initially, so think of it this way, a moves this way and a hat is somewhere here. So first, uh, first let me integrate this region, minus infinity to, so a, a hat, in this region a is less than a hat, right? So I will write, I'll, so maybe this is what, uh, is, it should be the other way, this is a hat minus a, I don't know whether that's what you will, all right. Now, hold on, hold on, let me finish the by argument. This should be positive, right? Whatever is this quantity. So there's only two cases. A is, if A is exceeding A hat, this quantity is A minus A hat. <coughs> if A is less than A hat, this should be A hat minus A. So in this region, which one is larger? A hat is larger, because A is somewhere here, right? So I'm going to write it as A hat minus A. In this region, which is A is, when A is here, a is larger than a hat, so I'll write it as a minus a hat. So this expression is exactly the same as this, except this is this I can differentiate <coughs> rather than jump in here like, with a sine function and all that stuff. Right? So the derivative of this is now look at here. The derivative of this is the derivative of the top limit. Uh, that's one. Then you substitute uh, into this wherever a is appearing, so that will be zero here. Yes. Derivative of the bottom limit, zero, so there's no contribution. Then the thir third term is leave the limits as they are. Take the derivative of this with respect to your variable, a hat. So what's the derivative of this with respect to a hat? What? Yeah, this is one, so just f of a given r, dr. Now we go to this and do exactly the same thing. Derivative of the top limit, zero minus derivative of the bottom limit, which is 1. But then when you substitute the bottom limit into this, that's 0. So the third term is uh, 
integral of integral stays the same the derivative of this quantity with respect to a hat what do you get minus f of a given or I put the minus outside here. This should be equal to 0. So we get the condition. We get the condition that you have uh, minus infinity to a hat f of a given or da should be equal to a hat to infinity f of a given or da. So if you have the, their density function, you can see if the density function is like this, f of a given r, what it says is that the area up to a hat, if a hat is here, this area and this area must be equal. So how much is each part? One half. What do you call such a point, anybody? A, a point on the x-axis where the two areas are equal? Median. So the answer, simple answer is a hat turns out to be the median. Yeah, I mean, it is robust because, <coughs> see, if, the, if a signal is like this, you transmit one, right? And the, with the noise, uh, suppose it becomes uh, like this, etc. The median, uh, so in other words, some values are small, some values are large. And if you rearrange and look at the median, it will turn out to be uh, this one, right? Because look at this, I just eyeballed it, right? The median is not the middle value, but if you rearrange uh, like this, so median will be this, which uh, cor corresponded to this, right? So the idea is that small noise is not going to disturb, and the values will be uh, uh, the, that's one, uh, so if you have a perfect image and you have salt and pepper noise, and you do a median filter on small blocks, you can get rid of the tiny values because it just goes for the... Uh, uh, so, uh, so if you, about a society, if you want to see what's the... Uh, it's always the median value, not the extremely poor, not the extremely rich, but uh, if you arrange the income or something in a level, what is... So this value, A hat, will be the median of f of a, this density function. Here this turns out to be the mean, right? So this is the conditional mean of remember, conditional mean of a given r. Everything is on the data is the king or the queen. But so ever, ever, the density function is modified by the data and you look at the median turns out to be the uh, best estimate of a mean squared error and if you take the absolute value the median is the best estimate all right so let's go to the third one <coughs> so they, here the cost function is like this so you have error which is a minus a hat and uh, the cost function is uh, not descriptive, but again, it's uh, nonlinear cost. So this is where we are, right, from the previous expression. I take this, look at here, I take, this is the cost function. Uh, if we, so I take this, the inner integral, this is what we want to minimize over a hat. So what is the best a hat? That's the question on C3. So look here, if, 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 if this whole thing was one, what would be the value of this integral, anybody? Suppose the C3 was just a line, it will be 1, right? So you can write this as 1 minus integral from, right? Because this is this form. So I can write this as this minus this, right? So this is going to be area under the density function is 1. So it's simply, yes? 
So this cost should be minimized. That means this should be maximized, right? So if the density function is like this, so suppose this is the density function of A given R. Look at here, you have to think physically. I want to maximize this quantity. My, uh, what is my only option? My only option is, remember, this is on epsilon. So epsilon is uh, A minus A hat. So translating this to, uh, remember, this is A, so the limits will be what? Epsilon is A minus A hat. So epsilon can go from minus delta to plus delta. So what will be the limits on A hat? Anybody? Yeah? yeah, so limits on A rather will be A hat uh, plus delta and uh, A hat minus delta. So the unknown is A hat. Remember A. So you are sw you look at here. You are uh, moving this window along A. The question is. Uh, uh, where should I put the A hat? So I can put A hat anywhere I like. Where should I put A hat? So that the this region, the area under that, this area is max. So should I put it here or should I put it here? So the answer is obvious. If you're moving this A hat, this A hat should be put where this a posteriori PDF peaks. So this is called the maximum a posteriori estimator. So this is maximized by uh, so the correct choice for A hat will be maximum <coughs> so, the, uh, the, so this is known as MAP, M-A-P So this is MAP estimator So it's a simple idea. So the so to, to summarize, the map estimator is one. So everything is everything is based on the conditional, the modified density function of the unknown parameter given the data. So you may have, you have the, because it's a random variable, it has the a priori density function. Uh, then you collect the data. Uh, then you have, uh, of course, the a posteriori density function of the same random variable, but modified and the data. The data itself is random, so you need to obviously figure out how to, uh, but this is what we are using, not this. And then it's it's a peak corresponds to the map estimator. That's what we are saying. So physically, you can see it. Of course, if it, it could have, you know, it need not be unimodal. It can have multiple peaks. So even if the density function is like this, this will be the thing. Unless these two peaks are equal, then you can take them with uh, whatever probabilities, right? Uh, so maximum value of uh, f of a given r is the map estimator. So, but this you can write it as R given A multiplied by FA given FR. So instead of taking the maximum value of this, you can take the maximum value of the logarithm. Uh, so this comes out to be log of uh, F R given A uh, plus log of F A minus log of f of. So to get a hat of map, if the density function is differentiable and so on, uh, you can do this uh, derivative of the log of uh, f a given r with respect to a. 
which is the same as instead of doing that, you can also do the derivative of the log of f of r given a. The third term is irrelevant because there is no a here. And then you equate this to 0 at a equal to a hat map. And you sub put this value into the cost function, uh, and you can compute the minimum value. So I gave you three three different estimation pro procedure for uh, for random parameters, and uh, just to uh, uh, do a problem. So for example, look at this, Ri's are poison with parameter lambda. But let's say lambda itself is exponential, right? It's some parameter mu. So lambda is a random variable. So the density function of Ri equal to k given lambda is e raised to minus lambda, lambda to the power k over k factor. So that's this part here. <coughs> I mean, this is just one observation. If you have multiple observations and a given lambda, if they are independent, then this becomes the product, etc. right? So if you say, if you go to that step, so the total is going to be product of P of Ri given Ki, but given lambda, so this will be the product of E raised to minus lambda, lambda I to the power K, lambda to the power Ki, over k effect, but it doesn't change any difference. So you just, uh, uh, so e either one is fine. So this is e raised to minus n lambda, lambda to the power sigma ki over ki factor. Right? So that's the first part. And then we can take its uh, logarithm. So to find the map estimator, I'm saying I can either do this, but this is usually hard. So we find it, look at what I'm doing. The, uh, the uh, given data, uh, uh, conditional density function of R given the parameter, multiplied by, so let me take the, so that, that part I did. So I'm going to take the logarithm of this. That's going to be the logarithm of this, the logarithm of this. So that's going to be minus n lambda plus sigma ki log lambda minus uh, log ki, etc. So then, uh, then I need to add, the, to that I need to add this portion, logarithm of the density function of lambda. So lambda is given to be, f lambda is given to be e raised to minus, it's a 1 over mu e raised to minus lambda over mu. That's what we mean by a. So when I take its logarithm, log of f lambda, 
is going to be minus log mu minus lambda over mu. So I am going to simply add it here. So I'm going to add the second term, which is log of f lambda is going to be minus log mu minus lambda over mu. Now I need to take the derivative of this with respect to what? What is the parameter? A is lambda, right? So I need to take the derivative of this whole thing with respect to lambda. I'm trying to save some space. All right. So that if I do this here, this is going to be minus n plus sigma ki over lambda, right? Minus 1 over mu equal to 0. So you can solve for lambda. So lambda is going to be what? you have uh, sigma ki over lambda is uh, n mu plus 1 over mu, right? So lambda hat math is uh, okay. And uh, remember, all the xi's are conditionally Poisson. So this is the sum of Poisson is again conditionally Poisson with parameter n lambda, etc. And uh, so this is the uh, this is the map estimator for uh, lambda. Right. 